With 60% of the world's arable land, Africa's ubiquitous agricultural resources are the continent's definitive asset base and represent over 23% of sub-Saharan Africa's GDP. And employing some 60% of the continent's workforce. Agro-resources play a significant role in Africa's economy. The potential of the agricultural sector is enormous and if well harnessed, can eradicate hunger and food insecurity. Moreover, with the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area, agriculture is set to boost intra-African trade, contribute to increased commodity-based industrialization and play a major role in global food markets. The sector is also an integral part of creating a shared prosperity that is core to Africa's Agenda 2063. So what exactly is needed to transform the sector and achieve maximum output? Increase food security and derive value from agricultural-based businesses. In response to the sluggish state of agriculture on the continent in 2003, the African Union undertook an ambitious strategy for its member states, one aimed at revolutionising agriculture, moving it from the fringes and into the centre of development planning. A simple but bold plan was conceived and born in Maputo. Simply put, governments would allocate 10% or more of their national budgets towards implementing a comprehensive African Agricultural Development Programme, CADAP. And in the long term, the investment would yield entrepreneurship, agribusiness and agri-food value. CADEP, we can say it is our common agricultural program for the continent. CADEP was adopted in 2003, even before you know, the Agenda 2063. In 2003, our head of states decided to put agriculture as a priority. As you know that uh, in Africa, you know, agriculture is the backbone of our, uh, of our economy. The social economic development of Africa depends on this sector. And uh, when we talk about food security, it is a basic need for any population. So that is the importance of this sector. That is the importance of agriculture. When we talk of agriculture, we have to look at all the food system from production the value all the value chain, it is very important. So CADEP, it is the flagship program. It is the all food system that exists for us to implement and make sure that all our citizens on the continent have access to affordable, safe and available food. This is the, the core of CADEP and that was really adopted in 20, uh, in 23 in Maputo. That is why we have the Maputo Declaration. CADA is Africa's policy framework for transforming agriculture and turning it into wealth, food security, economic growth and ultimately prosperity for all by focusing on four key pillars as priority investment areas in the agricultural sector across the continent. Pillar 1, land, water and management. Pillar 2, rural infrastructure and trade-related capacities. Pillar 3, increasing food supply and reducing hunger. And Pillar 4, agricultural research, technology and dissemination. So what have been some of the challenges prohibiting growth of management of the agricultural sector? We need more training. There is a lack of investment. We need better infrastructure. Boosting food production will be an advantage. We need more help for smallholder farmers. A decade after the initial Maputo Declaration, the African Union urged member states to recommit to strengthening CADAP and in Malabo, a new push to accelerate agricultural transformation was made by the African Union. The Malabo Declaration was adopted in 2003. And then 10 years after, in 2013, we decided to step back and try to review what had we been able to accomplish with, uh, with the Maputo uh, Declaration and what do we think had been the gaps that we need to address going forward. And so we had carried out um, that study and the study had identified that one key essential component that was missing in the Maputo Declaration was the lack of substantive engagement of the agricultural private sector. There are lots of discussions in terms of developing our agro-industries. That's also coming from the Malabo Declaration. There is also very strong focus on capacity building and also a strong focus on youth 
wealth creation, jobs for our youth. So in terms of the transformation, what the Malabo Declaration has been able to offer is elevating the discussion and looking at it more in terms of what are these issues that we think should bring about the transformation and how can we go about achieving it. And for me, this is where we're already having those discussions. The Malabo Declaration didn't uh, supersede uh, or replace the Maputo Declaration per se, but it, it came as a complementary uh, decision uh, to lay emphasis on specific drivers that the continent should be looking at. Uh, the Malabo Declaration therefore came up with seven key commitments. The member states recommitted to the principles and values of CADAP, enhanced investment finance for agriculture, ending hunger in Africa by 2025, reducing poverty through inclusive agricultural transformation, boosting intra-African trade in agricultural commodities, enhancing resilience of livelihoods and production systems, and mutual accountability to action and results. CADAP currently has 44 signatories to its compact, which explicitly require the member states to allocate 10% of their national budget to agriculture, and a commitment of raising agricultural productivity by 6%. These figures represent deliverable targets for member states to grow their agricultural bases and are also in harmony with African Union principles and aspirations for Agenda 2063, a prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development. We envision an enhancing to Africa trade in 2014 and we are talking now today about CFTA, I mean continental free trade area, and, and therefore you can see how agriculture fits into that because most of the commodities traded in, on the continent are mainly agriculture based. The continent needs to invest in modern agriculture for increased productivity and production, as well as exploit the vast potential of Africa's blue ocean economy. In addition, Action needs to be taken to address climate change issues and other environmental factors that pose a great risk to the agricultural sector. CADAP has convergent programs that are designed to complement the compact. The African Biosciences Initiative, Agricultural Technical Vocational Education and Training and the Climate Change Program. These diverse range of programs encapsulate the multi-level approach that the current program has to navigate in order to successfully penetrate the full spectrum of the agricultural agenda. The CADAP framework is implemented through a number of facets, including National Agricultural Investment Plans, the CADAP Results Framework 2015 to 2025, the Biennial Review Process, CADAP Technical Networks, and Country Agribusiness Partnership Frameworks. The CADAP framework specifically assists women and smallholder farmers by providing income-boosting agricultural training and access to formal and informal education in the agri-food sector through the Agricultural Technical and Vocational Education Training Initiative, ADVET. These interventions, coupled with the guidance on land and related policy processes, give women and smallholder farmers the skills they need to earn a living through the labour market and through self-employment. With food productivity levels in Africa still remaining consistently lower than in other regions of the world, increasing availability and access will help deliver on another of the continent's development aspirations. The issue of hunger will become a key priority for us. So within the Malabo Declaration, we also have a decision towards ensuring zero hunger by 2025. And for us, it's very critical, particularly with the emerging challenges that we're facing on the continent, uh, the climate change that we're having, uh, the fall armyworm infestation that took place, and then also recently, the desert locust invasion. That's also already impacting on the food security of our people. So for us, when you're looking at those four pillars, the issues of hunger, addressing issues of hunger and malnutrition are top priority for us, because right now, it doesn't look good for the continent. Hunger is increasing again. Malnutrition is up again on an increase. And so for us, that becomes a priority, that we need to address the hunger issues. The food and nutrition security of our people becomes a priority for us. Africa has 60% of arable land. And yet, we are still importing 
you know, import bill of food of $35 billion every year. And if nothing is done, if we don't change our narrative, we will import, we will import $110 billion. We need to change this narrative because we need to have an inclusive growth where all the citizens of these countries are out of poverty and are benefiting from the essential needs of a humankind, which is food. And so we need to take this sector very seriously. A large proportion of Africa's agriculture is still made up of smallholder farmers, and the program is seeking to bolster support services for this demographic. It is difficult to talk about agricultural transformation uh, when we have to rely extensively on uh, extremely subsistence kind of uh, economies. Uh, what we have been advocating is for countries to begin to look at agriculture more as a business. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, our effort is to help strengthen the uh, capacity of our smallholder farmers to appreciate agriculture as a business and provide the required incentives, you know, uh, that will provide the required enable environment business incentives for them to be able to function. Uh, one thing we're doing here as a, as a commission is to help strengthen the capacity of agribusinesses, mobilize them into apex bodies and uh, institutions uh, in a way that they can be better supported, they can be better strengthened, and also they can participate in the policy making processes that their voice could be heard by governments and to ensure that appropriate you know policies are put in place that favors them uh, one other area we're looking at is to advocate for uh, transforming the sector towards a, a more mechanized kind of system you know the, the manual labor is no more attractive uh, especially to to, to the youth the CADAP Compact also extends to the aqua and fish trade arena, with fisheries accounting for more than 14 billion US dollars annually revenue from the continent. The blue economy, comprising of Africa's coastal nations and resources, is a key factor in achieving the deliverable 6% annual growth as part of the wider agricultural sector. Cooperation in developing long-term sustainable fishing plans, preventing degradation and overuse are at the heart of goals under the CADAP framework. While the blue economy is yet to reach its full potential, utilizing directed CADAP national action investment plans to safeguard fishing practices and stock will serve to improve capacity in fish stocks and enable the resource continuity for future generations. How do we explore, unlock the potential of the blue economy, you know, for the betterment of our people, to reduce poverty, to create jobs, you know, and conserve, you know, the ocean, conservation management and conservation of our ocean and the biodiversity that is inside the, the sea. So it's the same ecosystem as when you're talking about land agriculture. And that is why we, we did a, a successful uh, blue economy strategy and we engage with everybody. And this strategy is not just a strategy on fishery. It is, you know, a cost cutting with all the department, our sister departments, other commission. What we need to do now is to pass from a paper to action. And more, many of our country, they say we should also look at the lakes and rivers, not only the seas and the ocean, and on the gender component, because women play a key role on distribution of fish, but they don't have means you know, of conservation is a very passive product. Once the, the fisherman comes with the fish, and these women, if they don't have, you know, the storage, the cool storage facility, they will lose all these things. So we want to strengthen capacity, build capacity, and empower women on the fishery actions. While managing and protecting our aqua resources proves to be a useful tool in longevity and sustainability, Environmental factors that are outside our control are also able to take their toll on agricultural productivity. A UN report on climate change indicates that agricultural yields are expected to decline by as much as 15% by 2050. While at the same time, population increase on the continent will put extra strain on resources. 
CADAP is spearheading the adoption of climate-smart agricultural practices that include systems that are actively protecting the environment in order to create sustainable food production models for the next generation. One of these is the Great Green Wall Initiative. The Great Green Wall is aiming to restore 100 million hectares of degraded land, ensuring that African ecosystems are resilient to climate change and in the process, creating over 10 million jobs. The 8,000 kilometer green fertile wall will span over 20 countries and support over 425 million Africans living in the dry lands to embrace such practices as sustainable water and land management, land restoration and rehabilitation, smart agriculture, renewable energy, improved animal husbandry, and promotion of agroforestry. As you know, without uh, um, uh, sustainable land management, it would be impossible to, for agriculture to be developed, for uh, sustainable development of agriculture. So um, uh, the Great Green Wall fits in very squarely into the vision and the, of, of the CADEP of the, the CADEP agenda, the Malabo Declaration CADEP agenda. So um, uh, so far, we the focus, the, the 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 initiative focuses on what we consider the dry lands of Africa. And if you uh, look carefully, you realize that the dry lands of Africa are some of the uh, weakest point when it comes to agricultural development in Africa because uh, these are areas that are affected by extreme climate. We talk about drought, we talk about uh, drought flood, we talk about dust storms, and we, we talk about uh, um, uh, um, uh, issues like insect pests. Now we are talking about the migratory locusts that's affecting a big chunk of Africa. Actually, these areas are all part of the Good Queen Wall. These are very vulnerable areas for such things like migratory locusts, for such things like climate change vulnerability. So we are very, very much uh, uh, implementing the CADEP uh, Malabo Declaration agenda. In addition to the Great Green Wall Initiative, the African Union supports member states to improve the efficiency of emergency responses to extreme weather events and natural disasters. Key amongst these projects is the African Risk Capacity, which supports member states in response to extreme weather events, as well as providing insurance coverage against natural disasters and other adverse weather phenomena. Since inception of its insurance pool in 2014, the Africa Risk Capacity has issued more than 32 insurance policies to African member states for a cumulative drought risk coverage of more than $553 million, helping to indirectly insure 53 million people against drought by 2019. So when I say agrarian, it's about the big A, where you involve all this. You involve forest, you involve climate change, you know, because all this land degradation, deforestation, desertification, all these are linked. You know, they are cross-cutting, they are transversal. So those are the areas that we need to assist in order to ensure that we have a food secure Africa or we, are, we have our, you know, uh, auto-sufficiency, auto you know, in terms of food production on the continent. As part of the CADAP framework, international partners are also aiding the compact. In support of the overall agricultural transformation, Policy advice by partners for sustainable market practices and training components form part of the country level implementation at national and also regional levels. We are joining hands with our partners to implement the African Union vision, which wants to achieve prosperity, peace and security and integration on the continent. How can this be achieved? It can be achieved through the Agenda 2063 which is the big vision for Africa on the continent. And as a partner, we work together, especially in the area of agriculture, to achieve the potential of agriculture on the continent. And to do so, the CADAP, the Comprehensive Agricultural Program in Africa, has multiple levels at the continental level, at the regional level, at the national level, to achieve the big objectives of agricultural transformation and growth. As GIZ, we are a technical partner. 
we are working together to achieve the implementation. And for example, CADAP has developed a biannual review, which on a two yearly basis is a frame to measure progress in the area of agriculture and transformation in the area of agriculture. While there are some disparities in terms of CADAP financing commitments being upheld, and even defaults by some member states in terms of honouring the Malabo pledges, confronting the agricultural challenges facing the continent will still inevitably mean sustaining the long-term productive agricultural endeavours and finding finance models for agro-business that are sustainable. We talk about the public sector budget allocation. Uh, many countries are also not allocating the appropriate resources to, to the sector and, and that need to change. Uh, in countries where you see that the, the leadership, the political leadership is committed to the agenda, you, you see things uh, move very fast and you, you see a, a lot of growth also. Uh, so it is critical that our member states and our head of state don't only sign on to a commitment, but they have also to demonstrate uh, personally and collectively uh, to, to, to those commitments and ensure that they provide the required enabling environment and support system and incentives uh, for, for delivery on those, those commitments. This is a framework that was agreed upon by the 55 AU member states. So every African Union member state has put in place um, agricultural development strategies that have built upon the CADEP itself. So it is easy for us to report, it's easy for us to monitor, and it's easy for us to track this, the status of implementation. Everything that has to do with agriculture is CADEP. Whether you're talking about trade, if you're talking about um, youth employment, you're talking about wealth creation, the post-harvest management issues, the land-related issues, bringing on board the ag private sector, private financing, investment, that all is talking about CADEP itself. So kind of broadly is the whole spectre of our cultural developments on the continent. With the challenges of population growth, soil degradation and climatic threats, the CADAP framework is not just a hallmark of major African Union declarations. It is a critical bulwark in what could prove to be an existential threat to the future development and progress of African member states. Furthermore, the vision of CADEP as a cohesive mode of transformation of Africa's agricultural resource and output is not a one-size-fits-all panacea for the continent. Yet it does provide a blueprint of what is achievable through committed agricultural reform practices that have the potential to yield wealth creation, economic growth and long-term prosperity.